Tonight, updates on two big eight on your side investigations. Um, this ain't bull. Money meant to take care of him vanished. Was your son's money gone? Yes. Part of $100 million lost from special needs trust funds. And I just feel like that saying the money is the root of all evil and this statement is true. They've lost so much. Now they're being targeted. I'm investigator Brittany Muller. Tonight, a warning to keep them from falling victim again. But first, what she witnessed scarred her for life. Like whenever I look at back at it, I'm just like, I can't believe that really happened. Her mother allegedly murdered by her stepfather. Now she's talking to investigator Walt Buteau about that painful day and the decisions that allowed the killer to get away. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. I'm Jennifer Lee. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories in a moment, but first, take a look at this. A plane falling from the sky over Brandon this afternoon captured on video. News Channel 8's Alessandra Young is live for us tonight in Brandon, Brandon with the story. Hey, Alessandra. Good evening, Jen. Now, officials say that two people actually walked away from this plane crash. You can still see the plane. It's flipped upside down. Now, they have been transported to a local trauma center. Eagle 8 flew over the scene just a little while ago. Hillsborough County Fire Rescue says they got several calls from people just before 3.30 for the upside down plane with a parachute deployment. Fire and Rescue says they found both people out of the aircraft walking with no hazards involving the plane. Now, it has been turned over to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and as always, we will keep you updated both on air and online as we continue to learn more. Live in Brandon, Alessandra Young, 8 on your side. Thank you, Alessandra. For the first time, the daughter of a Valrico murder victim is talking about witnessing the crime. Her stepfather remains on the run more than a year since he jumped bail. As Eight on Your Side uncovered, his bond was among the lowest for recent capital murder cases, one of many points of frustration for the victim's family. Investigator Walt Buteau is here tonight with this Eight on Your Side exclusive. Jen and Keith, the oldest daughter of Heather Toledo, is always looking over her shoulder. And like other members of her family, she still wonders how Enrique Toledo got away. On 4th of July weekend, nearly two years ago, in this Valrico home, the Toledo family was ripped apart. It hurts a lot. I would say you just you get used to it, but it never goes away. For the first time since the deadly shooting of Heather Toledo, her daughter talked publicly about the moment she lost her mom. We she literally always lit up every single room. She was so funny and she loved animals. Literally, we had so many different animals in our house and I bet if she could, she, we would have had more. I miss her so much every day. Enrique Toledo admitted he shot Heather in a 911 call to the sheriff's office. Investigators discovered two of the couple's children were in the home at the time. Their third daughter actually saw the shooting. Honestly, in the moment, you just feel like stuck, like there's nothing that you can do, like nowhere to go. And like whenever I look at back at it, I'm just like, I can't believe that really happened. The case against Toledo would unravel when he jumped bail only months after the shooting. After a complaint from his family that his $150,000 bail was set too low, Eight on Your Side reviewed three years of capital murder records. Out of the 126 cases from January 1st, 2020 to the time Toledo took off, bail was set at $150,000 or lower for only 10 defendants. 71, nearly 60% of the accused killers were held without bail. So Toledo was released with one of the 10 lowest bail amounts from a three-year period. He was supposed to be monitored with an electronic device similar to this one, but the night before a hearing that could have put him behind bars for contacting his children, he cut off the monitor and ran. It was several hours before authorities knew Toledo was gone. It's really upsetting to just know that he was out there and like he could have just been outside of our house and we would have never known. I think he's very capable of hurting other people and hurting other families as well. Heather's brother and sister-in-law are now raising the Toledo children. We have not been able to grieve in the greatest way because there's a closure piece that's not there. Because their mother is gone and at the hands of someone else who's out living his best life. They tell us they will worry until Toledo is caught. I feel like we're still like over, always looking over our shoulder, making sure that everyone else is okay. What is it like to have to do that every single day? It's stressful just knowing that you could be in danger literally at any moment. 
The U.S. Marshals Service is leading the effort to find Enrique Toledo, who's now been on the run for about 16 months. And he was in trouble before. Right. I feel like I remember that from one of your right. previous reports. Right. So uh, he was hit with an $11 million judgment in a civil lawsuit involving a death in a nursing home he owned. And he, we also found out he allegedly forged insur insurance documents connected to that nursing home. So his family members are not the only ones who are hoping that he is caught at some time in the near future. All right. Thank you, Walt. Okay. Appreciate it.